In this video essay, I will discuss the significance of social realism in drama. Social realism, also known as socio-realism, has been used as a way of expressing an art form for quite some time now, especially within cutting-edge drama, most notably British drama. Social realism began somewhere in the 18th century, revolving around artists such as William Hogarth, Enoir Dormier, Francisco de Goya and many others. In the mid-1840s, Dormier would publish his works known as Les Gens de Justice, which exploited the corruption and greed of figures of law, such as defendants and judges. It is said that he was heavily and negatively influenced by his work as a bailiff during his youth. Freedom and justice for all are infinitely more to be desired than pedestals for a few. An original quote by Dormier, which critically examines the origin of social realism, exposing the corruption and wrongs of society, which has been a big influence in modern day cinema. Social realism somewhat creates a familiar tone and setting for the audience by using a range of techniques. These include long uninterrupted takes, handheld shots, a strong use of location, realistic or unscripted dialogue, realistic sex scenes, naturalistic lighting, and it normally consists of a social or political agenda. Social class is very important in social realism, as it tends to be exploited. Andre Bazan, a well-respected film theorist, felt that these techniques promoted an ambiguity that more closely resembled our perception of reality. He stated, to produce the truth, to show the reality, or the reality. Nothing but reality is perhaps an honourable intention, but in the cinema there can only be a representation of reality. Here, Bazan expresses the significance of social realism in cinema. He believed film was uniquely capable of representing the real, implying the camera is a natural tool for realism. The purpose of social realism, apart from being a realistic take on cinema, society and life, is to oppose the style and formula of Hollywood cinema. Social realist texts differ from mainstream films in a number of different ways and to varying degrees. Social realist texts tend to be independent, low budget, directed towards either the art house circuit and or the video or television marketplace, and they stand as texts in contrast to classical Hollywood realist texts. Social realism is a powerful tool to be used in short film as well as feature length film, most notably Andrea Arnold's cutting edge short drama, Wasp. The story follows young single mother of four, Zoe, and her struggles as a victim of poverty and depravity. We're not sure if this is any fault of her own. We are merely given hints as to how she wound up in such a situation. As soon as the film starts, we are introduced to the tone and formula of the story. The setting is a run-down council estate, much like the ones we see in real life all the time. Zoe and the children look filthy, deprived of nutrition, and we can see that her baby boy is lacking clothes. This is what social realism produces, the truth, the reality, it's close to home. The entire film consists of handheld camera shots. This draws the audience into believing that they are a part of the story themselves, the observers so to speak. Handheld shots create an intensity, there's no time to breathe, which is what a short film does. Although the running time for Wasp is 24 minutes, there is an entire story to tell in such a short time, and that's done very simply with the use of social realism. One element of social realism is show, don't tell. We only have to look at society itself to draw a conclusion as to how Zoe and her children are in this situation. After meeting an old boyfriend, Zoe agrees to meet him at the pub after lying about her children, stating that she is simply babysitting them. It could be argued that the acting is phony and slightly over the top. However, it is purely naturalistic dialogue, reflecting on how we communicate with one another in reality. This scene gives us an insight into what family life is like for these characters, living in poverty. Zoe gives her children a bag of sugar to share out, as she has no food. This is somewhat a familiar sight to the audience. We see it in newspapers, social media sites, and we hear about it on programmes such as the Jeremy Kyle show. The use of unsteady handheld shots in this scene put the audience in Zoe's shoes, forcing us to feel the pressure she is under in such a situation. Once again, we are reminded of how she and her children are on the breadline, counting her pennies and realising she hasn't got enough. The pacing and the editing is a vital element of social realism. We bounce from Zoe being under immense pressure in the pub to her children running around outside. The jumps between scenes indicate that something bad is going to happen. This is a prime example of the camera being used as a tool. The way the camera is used here makes it difficult for the audience to see what's going on. 
which in essence creates tension. And there it happens, the groundbreaking incident. David's face has a thousand words, which leads to the usual social realism ending of ambiguity. David drives Zoe and her children home. It could be argued that this is a glimmer of hope. It could also be argued that things would be the same for Zoe and her family. David may never speak to her again. In an interview with The Guardian, Arnold states, I wonder whether my bleakometer is set differently from other people's. I have such passion for what I do that I can't see it as bleak. When people use that word, or grim, or gritty, I just think, oh come on, look a bit deeper. In conclusion, the significance of social realism speaks for itself. Very much like drama and horror, Social realism is part and parcel in cinema. It grew with film and continues to be expressed within the art form. Social realism is not a genre, it is a style, a formula, a way of expression within a genre itself. It will be devoured by filmmakers and artists, especially in British drama, for many years to come.